<laughs> Continue. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, real quick, I've been reading um, uh, the Summa Theologica and going back and forth between that and the book that you recommended to me, which is like one of the most, it's quickly becoming my favorite Catholic book. It's called uh, Apologetics and Catholic Doctrine by Archbishop Michael Sheehan, I believe, right? It is just so mm -hmm. good. And it is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like 75 pages in or something. And uh, it's a very big book, but it's, uh, it's basically going over essentially the Aquinas five proofs of like creation and proving God is God's existence and stuff like that and proving that humans have a soul and things of that nature. But one thing that recently stuck, stuck out to me was saying how like evolution, like I obviously I completely reject Darwinian evolution and that the, like the idea that we came from single celled organisms and that species can evolve into other species and stuff like that. I completely reject that a hundred percent, but I do um, submit to the idea of uh, micro evolution, which is like inherited traits through generations and stuff that you, inherit from your ancestors or whatever over time and even the possibility of generations adapting to their environments over time whatever i just totally disagree with the idea that we can adapt from other species or something like that but he mentioned something that is just so out of the realm of evolution in any sense or whatever is that different species just know things like that cannot be attributed to something that they inherited from something else, you know, like, for example, people want to say like, oh, well, giraffes needed to reach a higher branch to get the food. So over generations, they grew longer and longer necks or something along those lines or whatever, which is kind of kind of cringe, in my opinion, to even I don't even really know if I believe in that. But whatever, that's like a physical thing that was adapted over generations that could possibly be attributed to microevolution, whatever. But he talked specifically about this sand wasp, right? There's this certain breed of sand wasp who um, they they attack this worm and they cut this worm open, severing the specific nerves that it needs to paralyze them but not kill them and implants their larva in the worm, right? And then the larva is born and they know what parts to eat without killing the worm and keeping it alive. Now, that is something that, that this wasp is just inherently born with, that they know how to surgically cut open this worm to not kill it, to sever the nerves it needs to paralyze it and do all of this stuff, and then the larva knows what parts to eat without killing it, that they just know. It's not something that's learned. It's not something that could be inherited. This is just something that is just unexplainable that they know. And he was using this as a proof that there is something that is that is driving this species forward. Forward that cannot be explained through science or through evolution or through any of that stuff and that really like struck me that like like there's so much other proof like that and also today I, I was reading something along the lines of um the, w the one of the proofs of our soul is the idea that we can that that through our natural human reasoning we can come up with these abstract uh, immaterial concepts that cannot have a physical manifestation such as truth or um, or like honesty or whatever. Like we may be able to say that we've met an honest person or we can um, identify a truthful sentence, but we cannot um, like uh, say what truth is. You know, we can't like physically have a representation of truth or of honesty or whatever. These are abstract concepts that our intellect allowed us to create. And that shows that there is something, you know, greater than us that is allowing us to do this. That's from our soul, that these immaterial things, you know? So I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to say, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's super cool. And like, I haven't, you know, to be completely honest, big guy, you know, kind of pertaining to more like the evolutionary atheist, um, apologetics. I'm actually pretty underdeveloped in that area of, of apologetics. So I haven't even like read all the cool information about it. Cause it just wasn't really something I, that enter, ever entered like my like corpus of imagination. But like um, when you do look into it, I, the bit I have read, like it took me like reading like one sentence to be like easily convinced. Uh, like even reading like Archbishop Sheehan's book and like reading the bit of like contra like atheist apologetics that he had and stuff like that. Excuse me. I was literally like my faith, like literally improved that day. Like I was literally like, okay, I believe in my faith, like even more just by like reading that one sentence or that one argument. And it's kind of amazing in that sense. It's like, it's not that you disbelieve before, but, but kind of in looking up these apologetics, you just like, you get so much deeper in your faith. I mean, it was like the, um, the book on Roman primacy I recently bought, I, you know, I was like, okay, I know like Peter has primacy and, and what have you. And, and all that and that's awesome that's cool and then i read this book like with direct like source qu quotes from like saints works and stuff like that on like 
how the papal office works. And this is all before like, you know, 1054. And I'm like, holy crap, like, excuse my language, but it's like, crap, like this is like really involved. Like it's literally talking about the, the exact way that like an ecumenical council like defined, you know, how like there's a lot binding and loosing. So like all that is to say is like, it's really amazing how like when you start doing apologetics, you're not only helping other people around you, but it's like God is making you enter deeper into your faith. And that's just super beautiful and profound. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Cause when I, like when I came into the faith, like you, you already had like a, a semi-Christian foundation, I guess you were an Anglican and stuff like that or whatever. So you, you believed in God, like you never had a, if I'm, am I correct? Like you never had a real like atheist phase, right? No, I never did. Yeah. So, so that's, uh, so I came from like a, I was a radical, like super uh, abrasive atheist, Reddit tier cringe person or whatever. So like me coming to any sense of like there being a God or whatever had to come from people refuting the ideas that I already had pertaining to like evolution and things of that nature or whatever. So that's why like, I, I'm so interested in, in that aspect of, uh, of the apologetics where you're, you're basically just, you know, um, proving that there is a God and things of that nature. And the way that this guy does it, uh, Archbishop, uh, Michael Sheehan, I believe his name is, um, the way he does it is that he uses so many, like, I guess the term, it would be analogies, right? If it's written, would be analogies i don't know but he, he like he compare compares like uh gives examples or whatever so many examples in his book to better explain things and that's perfect for me you know i, I love that i love like when, when you can simplify like um like or articulate articulate complex topics into like simple analogies to better understand it and that's what he does all throughout this book so far and, I, and i'm just like absolutely loving it or whatever like just going by like um what did he say today like oh um where he said like, oh, if you go into a, a bike store and you see a bunch of different bike parts laying all around or whatever, and then two hours later you come and you see that all the bike parts have been completely put together into perfectly built bikes, obviously your conclusion is going to be that somebody had to build those bikes. It's not that just, oh, because you waited uh, a certain amount of time that those parts immediately put themselves in that specific way. That like exemplifies that there was an intelligent designer in putting those bikes together or whatever. So that, that has to also pertain to life, the way that our bodies work, the way that nature works, that there's order in the universe and stuff. And then of course you have the idea of infinite regression or whatever, that even if you per, like submit to the idea of the big bang theory, which I don't, um, that, uh, like, Oh, there was nothing. And then all of a sudden there was these different particles and they blew up and they formed this and over billions of years, they formed and blah, all this evolution happened and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, well then where did those particles come from? You know, where did the, even if you go back as far as you can, where did those little minute things that was just dust roaming around in nothingness, where did those things come from? There had to be something to put those in motion. If you're going by the laws of physics and the laws of science that atheists claim they submit to, right? And like the cop out that atheists have is like, oh, well, science doesn't know yet, but they're working on it. You know, it's just, that's, that's such a stupid like cop out. We know if you're giving us these laws of science or whatever, and we're proving through your laws that you're giving, that there has to be a, a, an unmoved mover, as Aristotle put it, that there had to be a first person, first thing that put everything else in existence. And then if you go by Einstein, which is another thing where he says that time, space, and matter all came into existence simultaneously. And if they came into existence simultaneously, that means that something outside of time, space, and matter, meaning something that is timeless, that had no beginning or ending, that is immaterial, um, and uh, time, space, and is outside of space, that had to put all of those things in motion. And if you believe that something outside of time, space, and matter put those in motion, we would call that God, you know? So it's just like, that's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm really interested in that stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, um, yeah, I find... I find uh, the way some people talk about the Big Bang funny because uh, atheist scientists, when it was pr originally proposed or one of the early theories was proposed, mm -hmm. accused the Big Bang theory of being too religious. So I always kind of find it funny that people like talk about it, how it's like this atheist thing when people would argue against it because they thought it was too religious. So like... I don't know. <laughs> and, and it's like atheism doesn't adequately explain phenomena that everyone knows exists. Like everyone agrees that morality exists unless you're like a super Nietzschean or something where it's like I make my own morality. Mm -hmm. But everyone agrees morality exists. 
you would say it's wrong for me yeah. to murder someone. You would say it's wrong for me to steal. That, Not everyone agrees on what that morality is, yeah, but yeah. morality is something that's transcendent. You know, it's something that you can't explain through natural phenomena. Does it help my species evolve if I'm not murdering people? Well, no, it helps people if I murder people. It helps people if I steal sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, morality is obviously not from nature. And so where does morality come from? Yep. Yeah, God. exactly. That, that was one of the things that I had too, that where, uh, I, I don't know who said it, but I uh, said, if, if God doesn't exist, then anything is permissible. We're just animals just acting on our instincts or whatever, and morality is just whatever the current social construct allows it to be. So you can't, that, that was one of the things too, like when I was like this like accelerationist or whatever, and I was just saying like, oh, imprison all of our enemies and all our politicians should be hanging and blah, blah, and all that stuff or whatever. And it's like, well, I might have an idea of what I think the perfect society is, and I might be able to have some evidence to back up why I think this would be a successful society based on history and stuff like that. But that's just my subjective view at the end of the day. If I don't have any authoritative thing telling me what is and isn't moral, if I don't have something that can distinguish between right or wrong, then anything can go and any any beliefs or any politics or anything is just based on your subjective feelings you know so you need god and you need to have that like you need to have objective morality and understand what is right and what is wrong and you can say things and use secular like well all all throughout history people thought this was wrong and all throughout history but okay where does that come from though what what really makes that right or wrong if you don't have god like we can say like, well, God said this is wrong. God said that this is not, not okay. And that's, that's what it is. You know, you, and you can't pick and choose. And I feel like, cause I think it's uh, Catholic teaching that we all have this moral law written on our hearts, right? Where did that come from? Is that just through evolution? Like, you know, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? And, and the morality they present is like this stupid libertarian idea where it's like, um, okay, you can do whatever you want as long as it's not hurting people. Okay. Why? Why? Why would I do that? Like, why, well, why would why I care it, about hurting other people? Why is it wrong to hurt people? Yeah, that was uh, one of the things actually from this guy from Crosstalks, who's a Protestant, but th this is one of the things that helped me stop being an atheist. This uh, this atheist came to, he was having like a QA, and a kind of like Turning Point does or whatever at their like speeches or whatever. And this atheist came on and he was like, how can you uh, worship a God who committed genocide and did all these horrible things in the Old Testament and killed people and allowed incest and blah, blah, blah. And he was going through like perceivably horrible things that God permitted in the Old Testament or whatever. Whatever, right and instead of like what I thought he was going to do was like go through each instance and, and like show like the proper context he goes he goes if there is no God there's nothing wrong with genocide right and the guy was like what, what, what do you mean are you saying that I support genocide I'm a moral person he goes no 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 he goes an atheist can live a completely moral life they can live a completely just life and be kind and, and live a, and live a good life but they have no justification for their morality so if you're saying there is no God then you're saying that uh, genocide is just something that if you want to do that and if you think that's okay then you can just do that you know and the guy couldn't say anything like what are you going to say